Okay, Sean, explain the purpose of this assignment and then how you tried to fulfill it. Okay, so the purpose of the assignment was to use Dart Basic to and Visual Basic uh, to create a program that would help in uh, one of your classes. So I used uh, my science class. Okay. And um, what are you doing in science? Well, we were studying sh like different structures of uh, molecules, so like Lewis structure or Bohr's model. Um, and so I decided to create uh, some models I've learned in the past okay. through my chemistry classes. Okay. Um, and so here's the program. It opens up with a, a window, a small window that says hit a button, button to bl uh, below to preview an animation of the element. And it's got the two elements I currently have right now, which I can create more in the future. Okay. Um, and, and so this is a visual basic form. Yeah, this okay. one is currently a visual basic form. So it runs under Windows. Yeah. Okay. And so when I hit one of these tabs as Helium, okay. it's going to pop this window. You hit Run, if that pops up. And it's going to uh, launch Dark Basic, the Dark Basic program. Okay, so you created a form in VB. And that form in VB has a, a button that once, once you click will launch an executable of a dark basic program that you created um, in, in DB. Yep. Okay, so you're using Visual Basic and Dark Basic. Yep. Okay, show us the code first in Visual Basic for launching this dark basic executable, uh -huh. and then show us the code you used in Dark Basic for doing this. Okay. Uh, launch the other button. Yeah, and this is oxygen. Which is a, um, a little bit larger. If you notice, oh, it very nice. If you notice, it has two rings, and I'll show you how. How, I, how are you pausing that? Uh, I'm using the spacebar to pause it and the con right control to continue, and I'll show you how I do okay, that so, later in the so program. Okay, so explain explain for the purposes of of the people enjoying the screencast what uh, what is there in the middle and what is rotating around the the middle there. Okay, so um, right now, uh, currently the mo uh the models believed most models have an atom in the center which is made up of protons and neutrons protons being blue and neutrons being red okay. and then in outside in like uh, a shape of a ring different rings uh, you have the electrons orbiting the the new uh, the eight protons and neutrons in the center and so, so you've got you've got eight electrons yeah in this in this model uh, for oxygen you have eight electrons uh, at its ground state uh, without trying to uh, bond with any other atoms mm -hmm. uh, this is what oxygen would look like having two electrons in the first ring and six electrons in the second ring those the ones that do bond are the outer rings okay and oxygen ha it has an atomic number of eight on the periodic table so that means it has eight protons and neutrons in the center mm -hmm. and at its ground state it has eight electrons in its rings in total okay. Okay, so one of the things that I suggest, you know, and maybe you guys could, could corroborate this. One of the things I suggest you do for this program uh -huh. is that you talk a little bit about what you just said, which is excellent. Okay, all that information that you have about oxygen should be somewhere in the visual basic form. Okay. So right now you have a button and the bunch, button launches this simulation, which is an outstanding simulation, but... Um, try to also have textually, try to have some information about what it is that you're simulating. Okay. Okay? And okay. Go ahead. Show us the code. For the Visual Basic. Show so us the VB code. The VB code is right here. It's just two, it's just two simple lines of code that uh, Mr. Morell taught me. Which, uh, this one up here, when you click on button, the Helium button, it launches... It launches, goes through uh, these folders until it gets to the executable and launches this helium.exe executable. Mm -hmm. Same goes for oxygen, but uh, with the oxygen's path, where it goes into the oxygen folder instead of the helium folder, and it okay. launches the oxygen executable. Okay, show us the, uh, and if you have any questions also, feel free. Show us the code in Dark Basin okay. for the actual simulation. Um, right here. So I'll show you helium first since the first one I open. Um, here we have the dark basic code. Um, the first thing I did was sync on is most of most of my programs at least. I like to start with sync on. Sync rate is going to set it uh, to a rate of 30. Now uh, what does that mean? It's going to, 
what I what I learned is that it's gonna set it on all computers since they run different frame rates. Mm -hmm. It's gonna set it to thirty no matter the computer. Mm -hmm. Um, the then I declared some variables. I got my space key, control key. Uh, wait. Oh, actually, this I should have removed because I don't currently use that mm -hmm. uh, anymore. Uh, just in the future, wait. whenever you're modifying code, uh, do rem at the beginning yeah. so you comment out the code so that if for some reason you may need that code back what what can you do delete the ram delete the ram and you'll still have that code there okay so like what you exactly what you did right now Sean. yeah um you want to give the person that's going to come after you you want to give them an idea of what how you debug this program mm -hmm. and if you start deleting everything and you just have the code that compiles they don't know the history of what you've done Okay, you want to always keep like an archive of everything that you've done in order to get to this point. So rem things out instead of delete. Okay? Yeah, actually, on my other program, I have something rem I wanted to show the. Um, well, okay, so so you've got degrees as integer. Yeah. What? Well, how are you using degrees um, in in the simulation? Well, um, I'll, I I'll show you later as I get down how I use degrees, but currently I just set it declared as an integer instead of zero. The, I have a degree counter, which is an integer. An orbital one is an integer. Uh, this is, orbital one means like the first ring, which you see for helium, how it has one ring. Oh, that will take long. Okay, well, it wants to open. When I, this is what I uh, call orbital one, which is the first ring. Auction has two. Um, what would happen if you changed the sync rate to a number other than 30? It sh how, how would it manifest itself? in the um in the actual it will go ahead it'll uh when i test it on my computer it goes faster okay so yeah. making the sync rate uh, a bigger number will make the refresh rate on the screen a lot faster. faster okay but it, but i noticed that it also makes the um the the uh electrons spin faster around the nucleus too right well yeah the electrons are spinning faster on the nucleus and the nucleus is spinning in itself faster right. Okay. And which I mean, it's supposed to visualize how neutrons and um, protons move around inside the. Okay. Nucleus. Show us a little bit of the mathematics of how you created that, uh, the 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 orbital. Okay. Um. So I come down here, and the first thing I do is I set this. What what was this? I don't remember this. I don't even remember typing that. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, first thing it come to is uh, I enter a do loop so that the program just continues running this area right here okay. and it doesn't stop. And then after I enter a for next loop, which is gonna um, first have a counter which I called n, and then um, it's gonna count from one to two because we have two electrons. Okay. So it's gonna do the first electron and then it's gonna do the second. Um, then well. Now it's rotating. It's telling first off to uh, rotate the nucleus. First thing it does is it has it rotating the nucleus, uh, both on the y and x axis. Okay. Then it's then it's coming down into the more of a math section, where um, it's going to start increasing the degrees by one. Which earlier, if you remember, I set that at zero. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to this part right here, degrees equals wrap value degrees, is going to keep it in between 0 and 360 degrees, so it's right. not ex uh, going to like 375 or anything. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is the real math, is what it's doing is, is telling this x chord is meaning the x coordinate for the location of the electron, mm -hmm. and it's telling it uh, the ring, orbital 1, which is set to uh, 10, so that, like it's the radius of how far it is from the nucleus. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's just making it a uh, larger distance away. And then the cosine degrees plus wrap value degree counter. So um, the degree counter I had set to... Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, no. Um, so to get the electrons... Right yeah, here. to set the electrons on two separate sides of the... Uh, or... I can't think. Uh... To set the electrons on both sides of the uh, nucleus, uh -huh. I have to use a degree counter. So automatically, it's set to zero. Mm -hmm. So it, what it's saying is uh, the wrap value of this 
of zero. Mm -hmm. So it's making sure it's within 360 when because it's gonna keep adding 180 later in the program. Okay. Um, and it's gonna add that to degrees, which is currently increased to one. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's gonna equal one degree. And it's gonna, what it does is it grabs the cosine of one degree, and it multiplies that by the radius to tell it how far, and that sets the x coordinate. And then the y, uh, it does the same thing for the y coordinate, but instead it uses the sine. Mm -hmm. And I use cosine and yeah, sine. Yeah, how, how did you know the relationship between the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the cosine of the angle, and the sine of the angle? Well, um, in math class, I learned uh, that sine and cosine have, uh, I learned how to graph them in Algebra 2 okay. last year. And uh, I have a picture of a cosine graph right here. Mm -hmm. If um, I learned on like uh, if you're graphing uh, a circle mm -hmm. and you're going by degrees, how the x coordinate uh, is rep uh, the cosine represents the x coordinate and the sine represents the y coordinate. Okay, let so, me let me just pause right now, guys. This is an example of an outstanding what I consider a, a STEM program. It uses science. It uses computer programming. It uses uh, graphics. Okay, it does simulations. It uses several technologies, right, to to um, discuss or to or to um, um, show showcase some type of scientific uh, uh, scientific point or concept. Okay, so this is one of the things that I'd like to continue doing in the class is uh, you're taking your math skills, your science skills, even social science, okay? Maybe um, skills that you learn in English, putting it all together and then creating some program like this, okay? Okay, go ahead. Show, show us the simulation again, Sean. Okay. Show us, um, show us there how how is how is this related to the the math? I mean, which can you talk a little bit about the math behind this? Okay, so like I said earlier, the cosine, yeah. Uh, if you're graphing it, st uh, sticks to the x coordinate and sine sticks to the y coordinate. So what I'm doing is, uh, with that degree counter, let's uh, let's say the degrees had was zero. So it grabs the cosine of zero. And the cosine of zero on a unit uh, on a unit on a circle, unit circle would be located right there. located right here on the x coordinate. So this which would is be like one comma zero. Exactly. Cosine well, of zero comma zero. Yeah, one comma z would be one comma zero. The sine of zero is zero. Right. And that'd be one comma zero, which is where locate. Well, it's not located one comma zero because then, if you remember, I manipulated it to to increase the radius from. Uh, the nucleus to the electron. Okay. So I multiplied it by ten. And it's actually ten comma zero. Okay. Hit the space bar again. So what you're saying is this thing, as it's going clockwise, is going through those different uh, degree values. Exactly. Okay. So what it's doing is it's getting cosine of zero and sine of zero, and multiplying it by ten, and it's putting the electron there, and then um, it increases, let's say, forty-five degrees. So what's the cosine of forty-five? Well, Radical two over two. Actually. That'd be cosine of 45, 45 degrees and sine of 45 degrees, and that would be radical 2 over 2, comma radical 2 over 2, right. and then both of them are multiplied by 10, so I can get okay. the electron farther So, from so the th basically these two electrons are going around the points around the unit circle? Yes. Okay. All right, show us, uh, I just have one more question. Show us um, the, the simulation for oxygen, and then how were you able to get two things moving around at the same time. Okay, so let me close this. and show for for uh, Sebastian's sake. Sebastian, you came in a little uh, after the class started, uh, so you can see the oxygen molecule real quickly. This is done in dark basic. Yeah. Okay, just one last one last question, and then I'll have you guys uh, ask any questions. Okay. How were you able to, uh, go ahead and do this simulation. How were you able to do both of these at the same time while this is spinning? One of the, one of the issues that some of you guys had was trying to do more than one simulation at, the, at a time. This, I'm, I'm looking at three simulations here, right? Yeah. 
I'm looking at these inner, uh, this inner orbital, this outer orbital, and this, which appears to be spinning around two different axes, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how were you able to do all three at the same time? Well, I basically use the same code as, from, uh, as helium, where uh, I have, but except since I have two orbitals, that's where orbital two as integer equals 20 comes in. So it's, oh, when okay. orbital one has the radius of like 10, <laughs> right. like 10 units, Orbital 2 is another 10 units behind orbital 1. So that's a total of, or of 20 units from the nucleus. So it's just one variable, one value that, that controls how big the, each of those circles yeah, are. Yeah, how, how, how far out the... Yeah. And then I separated, I separated the electrons evenly uh, by, with this value, which I, which I had set at 0. So what it's doing is it's telling to place the first electron at, when it starts at uh, 0, what cosine and sine would be at zero degrees mm -hmm. and then at the end of the four next loop it adds 60 so now it's telling uh it's telling it to put the electron and the at uh, the cosine and sine of 60 degrees uh -huh. and then it does and then it adds 60 degrees again to do the next electron yeah. and then after that it's going to be increasing it's going to be increasing the total degrees by one okay show us the after simulation again. uh okay that, that's it for me. This is an outstanding presentation. A any any questions, guys? Well, I have one thing. Yeah. Is that ahead. you were talking about earlier how uh, you should archive your work. I had this actually done before, which mm -hmm. was a little bit longer. But then I had Ivan help me out. Mm -hmm. And he helped me shorten it out into a four next loop, which I hadn't thought about because okay. I couldn't think of I couldn't think of how um of getting uh, these two electrons in one in one set of mm -hmm. code, and then these next six electrons in another set of code. Right. I had done it by each electron. Okay. And so Ivan came and helped me. And okay. Set so it into two small loops. So you use the four next loop to automate code, um, uh, and to keep it more condensed. That's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. With Ivan's which is help. which is interesting because in another one of my classes, I had a kid today do something with arrays that uh, another kid a while back had done a bunch of variables, uh, hundreds and hundreds of lines of code when actually all you needed to do was create just one array to store a bunch of values that you could populate the array with using a loop. So loop, loops are, are, what are loops used for then guys? To automate, repeat. To, 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 to make things that are repetitive easier and, and less cumbersome, right? And to make the code more efficient. In, in the process, right? Easier to read. Easier to read if if by making the code more efficient and making it less code, if, if that's what you mean by easier to read, I agree with you. Uh, it's not that a loop is easier in terms of its complexity yeah. relative to other structures, but okay. Questions? Questions? Comments? Um, Mr. Sharon? Awesome. That, that was great. I have a, a few questions though. Um, Thank you. What was the assignment that you gave them? Like, what, what were they supposed to do for you right now? They were supposed to create, they were supposed to combine visual programming and dark basic in an effort to create an application that could help them in one of their classes. Help them or help others? Uh, if it helped them, per, um, presumably it would be helping others. So the, the way I envision this program, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, the way I envision this program, this program is incomplete, by the way. It only shows helium and it shows oxygen. Supposing a kid has a question about a particular um, atom in the periodic table, I could envision with a little bit of help the, the student actually doing something similar to this for some of the major uh, atoms that they cover in a chemistry class. So if a person has, okay, oh, well, what is the electron configuration for actinium? Okay, actinium, uh, or what is the electron configuration of a typical noble gas? Well, then the person can click on fluoride or can click on, on, on another noble gas. I, 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 my chemistry is a little, a little <laughs> a lacking now, but um, then they can get the information about that, and then they can also see a visual simulation of that particular... Yeah, I'm looking at it from a different side. I agree with everything you're, he's saying, and I, I like the way you composed yourself. That's a very complex thing to talk about in very general terms. Is you're asking all the right questions, 
Because I had the same, when, every time he asked a question, I actually had that question. Oh, so, okay. so the way he was probing you, was, it made sense to me. Obviously, if he didn't probe you, I would have been lost. I'm not proficient at this enough to understand. But because of the probing, I was able to follow every single step and why and how and how far it was. So it was excellent from both. But I do have a couple of things I would like to suggest, and I'm sure you're probably going this way anyways. I think this is a hell of an opportunity to do a lot of things. For example, math. Why are we learning this? Science. Why the hell are we doing astronomy? Why are we doing physics? Um, go down the list with any STEM-related field, and this is a real application that you can show your math teacher, your science teacher, any teacher for that matter, specifically chemistry and math, that, look, you know what, I have something that will show the relevance of why you ne might lead to understand sine or cosine. Mm. Show them this. Now, here's the problem. That's going to go over everybody's head, unless you have a technical background. So you should think of possibly shorthanding this into a Prezi or a PowerPoint in layman's terms, but be able to elaborate further. So there is a skill set you all have to learn. You guys are in a different freaking frequency band than most of the school. You have to understand that. The difference between Einstein and other scientists was not his intelligence. It was his ability to be on the same frequency with politicians, other scientists that make a difference to possibly us getting freaking killed. Okay, so if you understand the history and how he was able to communicate, we might have a different country now. Okay? Same thing with programmers. The problem is, you might, okay, this is going to help me specifically, and I love that. But I encourage all of you guys to really see how this can help you in other classes and using that as a target. I can tell you right now, you're probably going to be taking calculus. You're probably going to have Miss Kaplan. This is something she loves. Mm -hmm. to be able one of the reasons see, I'm recording it, by the way. Right, so to see the, the application of what they're learning in math. That's the hardest thing for a math teacher. They don't get it. Not them. I'm saying people don't know why am I learning this stupid curve. But you're actually showing that. So always when you're programming, think of what the end user is getting. Always. If not, you're just learning a lot of shit. What are you going to do with that shit is what my question is. And you don't need to wait. You're going to wait till after you graduate? Too late. you got to think about it now, next year, moving forward. So I really like, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking of so many different possibilities. This approach to what you're doing I would put astronomy and, and computer science in one class if I could. Wow. Okay, I would put astronomy, chemistry, and computer science in one class if I could. Yeah. Because that would be a rich experience from all perspectives. You can design a whole freaking course off what you're doing, a whole curriculum, a whole STEM-related uh, track. Mm -hmm. That's how far you can go if you wanted to go that direction. Yeah. You're not. But you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I love that. You've got to be focused on what you're doing, but don't look at this like this. Look at it from a broad sense. What I bring to the table is for engineering, personally, what's not the engineering. My first love was biology, and then I loved chemistry, and then I loved physics, and I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I don't really like medicine. I don't like freaking doctors, and I hate politics. So that didn't work for me. So what the hell am I going to do now? Shit, I like blowing shit up. Okay, engineering, that's kind of cool. So, but here's the moral of the story. When I look at engineering, I don't look at it as an engineer. I look at it as a biologist. Why? Because biology has been around for millions of freaking billions of years, whereas engineers have been around for, you can count the years, okay? Yeah. So when you're looking at a program, it is limitless, a limitless to what your creativity could bring. And I love the pictures that he's bringing. I love the fact that you brought that sine and cosine. That's such a big deal. Yeah. You know, and you doing and trying to think of a way where you can package that in three or four minutes would be a big time marketing experience for you. Hey, look, you know, you talk to your a math teacher. Go, you know what? I have a little demonstration that shows why it was important for me to, to do this for a specific uh, uh, task that I had. You know, would you like to see it? They might lie, you're wasting my time, or you might have a visionary as that teacher, and it's not kissing ass or being teacher's pet. It's being able to connect the dots, and you would actually probably change the way that teacher sees that class, and that's a big deal. And I've had students do that for me, where, wow, I see it a different way, like, mother of God, I'm going to use this. And to me, that's where I think we've benefited from kids like you being creative and, oh, wow, showing it a different way, but just don't let it stop there. Keep building from it, 
Okay, so let me. I, yeah, I thank I'm you sorry, for. I ahead. thank you for that, Mr. Sharon. Let me piggyback on what Mr. Sharon said. A bunch of students that I've had in the past have come to me and they've told me, Mr. Morell, I did not find any relevance to what I'm doing now in my career in this one particular class, and I didn't find relevance in that particular class, but I was able to, I was able to find relevance with, um, with c classes combined. For example, um, computational math, learning mathematical concepts by programming things like this on the computer and seeing a simulation of what you're talking about. Okay, people don't understand what the sign of an angle is unless you visualize it. Okay, the sign is the ratio of two sides in a right triangle, but it can also be represented you, uh, in coordinate geometry uh, as the cosine of the angle in a unit circle, you know, things like that. You, there's got to be more than one way to be able to describe a concept, and like computational math is an attempt to do that. You know, learning math by, by doing programming. Okay, it's called computational math. It's catching fire in colleges. Okay? Just to piggyback on what he's saying, everything you're doing, you should do a portfolio for. But do yes. it in a way where a bonehead would understand. But you do, you do it deep enough where it's not a watered down thing. It's a skill. It's a skill to actually put something up where anybody that doesn't have a computer program understands what you're trying to do. And yeah, that's the way I did it. Do you need to understand it? No, because you don't know about programming. Okay, that's fine. But that's what I would challenge. It's like, what is the point and what's the possibilities? This is an example of what I did. This is how it crosses different types of fields. And what's the next step? What are you going to do with this now? That's what I would have liked to have seen at the end. Like, yeah. what are you doing? What are you going to do with this? Because it shows that you have a vision of where you see this going, and then that's where, that's where your, 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 like him himself, can guide you to that direction. Yeah, that, that's an outstanding question. What do you want to do with this program, Sean? Well, I, was, I mean, it's an outstanding program, but it's limited now in, in terms of its usefulness. I was, because it's not done. I was, right. I, was, exactly. I was looking just to do this for my assignment. But if I was to really take this far, uh, to the far next level. or something, yes, I would probably create uh, the full periodic table in Visual Basic. Okay. And then um, I would uh, have each pro uh, button program, each button program, so that when you click on it, it'll open up like information about the. Okay. One uh, suggestion for that: there's 117 right. atoms in the periodic table. Right. Right. Okay. Not even Mendeleev had those 117. They, you know, yeah. Einsteinium, yeah, uh, yeah. all of those, yeah. Mor Morellium, yeah. those came out yeah. afterwards, okay? Chavium. Um, <laughs> but here's my point. Instead of doing 117 buttons, mm -hmm. maybe it's like a drop-down menu. Yeah. Okay? You do, Something. you do like three or four, maybe from different, like a, a gas versus this, or right. show the differences. And then, if that, and then again, is there a point to going all the way down? And, you know, sometimes you got to have a, remember, that's a lot of time you're talking about. Oh, yeah. We know you can do it. That's not the question. Yeah. But the time is going to be not wasted. It might, it might not be uh, used as wisely as it can. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. might want to go deeper in one specific capability as opposed to going 117. Yeah. You may want to make. Because there's an app that's 30 bucks that does pretty much what you're saying. Right. But you might be able to go deep enough. Where holy crap, this is different. This cross, you click on this now, it shows you the specific math. Now it shows you the physics. You see where I'm going? Oh, yeah. There can be a different application to what you're doing. But if you go 117, it's just oh look what I did. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the thing. There's a lot of people that program. Okay. But not like I keep telling you with a point. Have a freaking point to what you're doing. Right. If not, it's wasted time. Yeah. No, it's just not, you know, as productive as you would like, you know. Right. Well done. Excellent. Are we hey, going to see someone else tomorrow? Yes. Um, any other questions? Any questions, guys, from, from the audience here? Any comments? In the back. You're in the back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Alt, Alt, thank you for your I'm contributions. Start over, man.